Um, but back to the New York Pro. Um, if you do the New York Pro, can you beat Nick Walker? Because he's the front. Everyone knows he's the front runner going to the show. Yeah. You, you're going to go in the show to win the show. You're not going to go, well, I'll see how I look next to Nick and these guys, and maybe I'll get fourth or fifth or eighth or whatever. No, you're going into the show to win. So with that mentality, do you think you could beat Nick Walker with what you've done this year so far with your physique and the improvements you've made? I think my physique, I think I have strengths over him. I think he has strengths over me. Uh, for me personally, like I can acknowledge that he is one of the top guys in the sport. But as I said, there's going to be certain shots where he might beat me, but certain shots where I might beat him. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Muscle Discord. And we have a very special guest, first time on the podcast, Quentin Beastwood, man. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, thanks for having me, brother. Awesome. So you're in Ontario, correct? Yeah, in right. uh, Toronto. Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. And so just uh, kind of run things back a little bit with you. So when did you turn pro? Because I, I don't know, did you compete in the CBBF Nationals or did you go into the CPA, Canadian Physique Alliance, and turn pro there? Yeah, yeah, I'm an OG, bro. I competed in the CBBF. And I won the natural nationals there. Back then, we had to do a provincial show to get there. Yes. Yeah, those are the days. So what year was that when you turned pro? In the 2017 in May. Okay, 2017. So, yes, I also competed in the CBF nationals, um, but I uh, didn't turn pro. Uh, I won my class. So you won the overall in the, yeah. na in the nat national naturals. Yeah. CBF. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was 2016 when I did it. So I don't think we were competing in, at the same shows. Maybe maybe we did if you were competing in 2016. Did you compete in 2016? Uh, that, that was the year I did provincials. Okay. So that was quick. So you went, you did you won provincials, and then you did the CBF Natural Nationals, got your pro card as a natural athlete, right? And then your first pro show was in 2018? No, the first pro show was 2019. I took the, yeah, I wasn't planning on being an open bodybuilder. I didn't yeah. want to use, you know, the super supplements and that stuff. So I took a year to just, you know, keep doing what I was doing. And then at the end of that year, I'm like, you know what? Let's give this shit a run. Let's yeah. Give shot a shot. So then I started at a, one big off season and then I did my pro debut, the Toronto Pro in 2019. 2019. So what did you weigh in at in like 2017, 2018? What were you weighing on stage then? I was weighing around at my most 214 pounds naturally. Damn. So, and how tall are you again? That's one thing I want to ask you now. What's your, your height and your age? I'm six foot one and um, 28. 28. Okay. Cause a lot of people just put stuff out there. They guess your age, they guess your height. So uh, that's why I like to ask people that come on my show, their actual age and your height. So we got that. So you went from 214 and then you did your first pro show in 2019. Which show was that? That was the Toronto Pro Show. Toronto Pro Show. And what did you weigh on stage there? I believe I was 252 at that show. Okay. So you went from competing at 214 on stage to 252 in like a, a year and a half, basically. Yeah, basically. So what did you, did you have a coach with you at that, at that time? I know you're with, you're with Matt Jensen now. Yeah. Now I'm with Matt Jensen at that time when I first made that decision to push for, you know, open bodybuilding or just to push my pro career because yeah. classic physique was an option at that time too. Yeah. I was working with uh, Dorian Hamilton. Yes. Dorian, yeah, I used to, I competed against him in the muscle mania days when you were yeah. way back in the day in Toronto. Uh, so yeah, we go way back. I mean, Dorian as well. Um, okay. So you did the, so you put on like 40 pounds, 35, 30, 40 pounds of muscle. What did you, how did you do that? Just, is this cause you were so genetically lift, gifted naturally when you went on the gear, you just blew up pretty much. Basically it's like that. I was training, like, I mean, just training hard, just like 
I always did, but the response to everything was just pretty, pretty crazy. So I yeah. saw some good progress there. Yeah, that's crazy. And then, so now you're, you're four weeks out. We're not, well, I'm going to say four weeks out. I don't know. We're, we're going to figure out what shows you're doing. So you can speculate. Um, but I did see you this off season and I, I did a show, I did a, a, a reaction or something. And I said, man, what Quentin got so heavy. And I didn't call you fat, but I said, you got so heavy in Nick Walker's like, Oh, mess with discord. I think, I don't know if you were on that show with him. I think it was on Antoine's show. Yeah. So he called him Quinton Fat. And I'm like, no, I didn't call him fat. I said he just got really heavy and puffy in the offseason. So how heavy did you get this offseason? Um, at that point, I think I was – the heaviest that I got, I believe, was around 330. But at that point, I was actually lighter. I was like 320, and I was just softer. Yeah. I wasn't pushing the cycle anymore. Okay, okay. And so now you're – How? when did you start your prep for – trying to figure out what whatever show you're going to do when did you officially start your prep this year like like when yeah when I mean, you start cutting down first weekend of december okay okay so you've been prepping for quite a while then december january march april like five months you've been prepping almost yeah five months wow okay okay so that's yeah you, you definitely have tightened up quite dramatically since your off season obviously so which shows are you contemplating doing this year? I'm contemplating doing all of them, man. Okay. Like at this point, I mean, I would have loved to do Detroit if, you know, I got in shape for that time period. But for me, I think I'm really going to, I think we're really going to hit our stride real soon. So whatever show is there, I'm going to come. You know, I'm going to have some fun. <laughs> Okay, so it, that was what cut. I'm glad you brought up Detroit. So, based on what you saw in Detroit, you know, Martin Fitzwater won the show, Good Vito was there. If you were to have entered that show, how do you think you would have placed? Do you think you would have won that show, got second, third? I mean, I'm not much of a talker when it comes yeah. to that. You know, I just feel like I got to let my physique do the talking when I get up there. Okay. But, okay. But they both, they both looked really good, man. They looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. It was it was a good show. Um, the stage lighting it was it was awesome. So it would have been great to see your physique in that lighting too. Like, I mean, I think a lot of pros missed out on that on that show in the sense of showing their physiques and having that lighting and the the black uh, backdrop on there as well. So you know, but, for me, for me, it's for the guys that were in shape that just did one of the Arnold shows or some of the Arnold shows before. For me, I'm like, bro, twenty five k. Yeah, in shape already, like. Just hold it and, you know, go get you some cash. You know, yeah. Bet on yourself. But it's yeah. Good. Yeah. And I think a lot of guys are listening to their coaches in that aspect. And the coach is like, no, 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 we'll, we'll wait. And we'll do it later. And I think De La Rosa missed out on an opportunity there because he said, you know, his coach said, no, let's wait out. Let's try and get a little bigger and then do a show later in the year. But then now you're, you're losing out on time, right, before the Olympia. And if you still don't qualify, then you're going to miss the Olympia. So it's like – Take advantage of these earlier shows so you can shut it down and just grind into the Olympia. And you're right. People missed out on a great opportunity in Detroit to not only capitalize on that $25,000 first place check, second place is 10000 That's what first is usually in these shows. So you still get some good money coming in second. And um, you miss out on these opportunities because I think they're trying to pick and choose these shows. I think you just could compete, get the experience, yeah. especially if you're a newer pro. And and that's what they used to do back, like Milos, all those guys, they used to do so much, Chris Cormier, they did so many shows back to back throughout the year that they got so polished. They were so good on stage. Yeah. And that's what I feel like a lot of athletes nowadays miss is that polish, is that stage presence. They think they got the great physique, but then they don't really have the stage presence. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. They just had a lot more experience up there. And yeah, it was a different time. The culture of bodybuilding was a lot different back then. Now it's like, Trying to be more methodical. There's more chems involved. It's a bit more dangerous now. So it's like, okay, I don't want to do too much of it. But yeah. uh I definitely miss that vibe from the days of the Milos's and the Chris Cormier's. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let's talk about the New York Pro because that is four weeks out. And judging from what I'm seeing, your physique, I was gonna actually share your your most recent kind of updates here. 
There we go. So we'll go to this one. We'll go to we'll go to one of these here. So what's your weight in these photos here? Mm, I don't remember. Maybe like mid 280s. 280s. Okay. You're six one, two eighties. And the glutes are already showing through. Feathers in the quads. I I don't see much left to pull, even body fat wise. Like, what do you what are you feeling with your physique now? Like, you you you're posting a lot. Are you confident in the in the physique that you're bringing this year? You know. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling very good in the physique, the package that I'm bringing this year. Yeah. Um, the condition, the condition where it's at right now, it could, it could be better. You know, like we don't want to come to the stage with anything short of spectacular. So, mm -hmm. you know, if that means we have to say hold up on one of the shows, then we'll definitely do that. We want to make sure that we come in a hundred percent. But um, yeah, man, working with Matt has been uh, it's been a great experience, man. He's he's that dude, man. He's good at what he does. Agreed. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on and some of the questions I have about you, Matt, working together. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, you you still have like that classic physique structure, but with carrying 280 pounds. So Nick Walker is going to be on that stage in the, on the, in the 260s. What do you think? So what was your the last time you competed? What was your stage weight? My stage weight at the Texas was 263. 260. So OK. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm coming in, you know, significant with significantly more tissue. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it's going to be a good comparison to whoever is there personally. Like, I just, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, you oh, should I, be. You should yeah, be. I just know that, uh, I just know this year is different. What... So let's talk about kind of the, the off-season training and kind of your prep training leading since you've been prepping since December. What have you been focusing on? Like, what did the judges say, okay, after the show they talked to you? What did they say you needed to work on? Um, You know, shoot, that was a, a little bit of a while ago. Uh, I can't remember what they said exactly. Maybe, like, parts of my back. Um, I, I think when I got with Matt, he was the one that said, listen, we need more adductors, more arms, we need more chest, we need more back. So Matt gave me a more clear idea of like the things that I needed to bring up. So yep. we started working together. That's what we targeted. And we really started uh, going to town on a couple of things. First, I was training back and chest like twice a week. It was a higher volume program. Uh, these days, I'm actually doing a lower volume program. So these days, I'm doing four days a week. And honestly, it's been fantastic, man. It's been it's been really good. I've been able to be more intense with my training and less risk of injury because I'm resting a lot more. And yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. I like I almost don't know how I can go back to training five six times a week. Yeah. So how many days per week are you training out? Three to four. 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 That's all I did when I competed was four days a week. I never did six know. or seven. Yeah, I never did six or seven. I did maybe I did cardio maybe six days a week sometimes, but that's another question. So for this prep, what's your cardio regimen like? Are you do, are you a guy that needs a lot of cardio? Or are you genetically gifted? You can do twenty minutes and you're you're done. Like, what's your routine? I think because of all the weight that I was holding before this time around, I'm having to do more cardio than before. But I don't mind it, man. For me, it's like it's something that I rock with a badge of honor. So right now I'm doing up to. 110 minutes of cardio so 55 minutes in the morning 55 minutes at night and um i mean man today like yesterday because it's a rest day i'm on that rest day diet you know yeah. low calories um they, it, it sparks some challenges but you know i'm a little crazy and when i feel tired when i feel a challenge like you know, part of me gets a little excited you know it makes me want to push harder so it, it was good man Okay, well, to tell us about those challenges. Like, what? So it's a low carb day. What are some? What are you experiencing? Maybe different from other years now on this type of a diet and the challenges you're experiencing. So, well, compared to other diets, I'm doing way more cardio than I've ever done. Uh, but my energy is better this prep than any prep I've ever done. And the biggest difference is I'm eating a lot more protein. So I, I think that's one of the biggest differences. Like. My recovery is better. I'm actually also I'm training less, so I think those things have favored my recovery. So 
with the lower calories, with the low carb, I'm just handling it so much better. But even still, I still have times where I'm fatigued. I have days that aren't the greatest because the drugs, man, the drugs mm-hmm. fuck you. Not really because yep. I'm hungry. I don't feel too hungry. It's more so like sometimes the drugs make you feel really anxious and yeah. tense and stuff. Uh, some days when I'm doing cardio, like today, at certain points, like I'm in a good groove and then I hit like a five minute hold where like my legs are moving slow and I got to like push mentally. I got to get myself to keep maintaining the RPMs that I was at before. So those are the kinds of challenges. Okay. And so, yeah, you're doing almost two hours of cardio. Is that every day or is that just three, four days a week? How many days are you doing that much cardio? Every day except leg day. Okay. Okay. So six days a week. So you Matt's really pushing you on the cardio and it's 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 paying off for sure. And you're still holding 280, 280 pounds of tissue still with being that lean. Um, and then what's a low day for carbs for you? So I don't actually calculate it. You know, Matt's kind of coach. He just types out the grams of the food that he wants okay. you to have. So I, I don't actually calculate it, but it's like pretty much... 100 grams of rice for three meals and then that's all the carbs for the day on uh, my rest days okay and that's a and then a training day what are your carbs at roughly there's three meals so 100 grams of rice and then one meal has 140 okay and you said your protein's higher so how, what's your protein at per meal ounces or approximately eight ounces eight ounces of protein yeah. per meal okay and then on on um rest days three of those meals like my last three meals have higher protein i don't know what it is in ounces but it's 250 grams okay yeah okay Okay. so and how many meals per day like that six 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 meals a day okay okay so you're you're grinding out you're doing two hours of cardio a day roughly six days a week you're having some low carb days um but it's working and you're trusting the process and your oh, physique yeah. looks ridiculous. Okay. You we're gonna I was gonna ask you this question a later on as well. I'll just leave it for now. Um, but back to the New York Pro. Um, if you do the New York Pro, can you beat Nick Walker? Because he's the front everyone knows he's the front runner going to the show. Yeah. You you're gonna go in the show to win the show. You're not gonna go, well, I'll see how I look next to Nick and these guys, and maybe I'll get fourth or fifth or eighth or whatever. No, you're going in the show to win. So with that mentality. Do you think you could beat Nick Walker with what you've done this year so far with your physique and the improvements you've made? I think my physique, I think I have strengths over him. I think he has strengths over me. Uh, For me personally, like I can acknowledge that he is one of the top guys in the sport. But as I said, there's going to be certain shots where he might beat me, but certain shots where I might beat him. So... Mm -hmm. I believe wholeheartedly, like I believe in myself 100%. So I have no doubt. I'm not worried about anybody just because it's bodybuilding, bro. Yeah. It's not like getting it's, in a ring fight. It's bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, I'm here, have fun, and show my physique. So, yeah, I feel real confident. Okay, awesome. So I like to see the, the confidence. And the thing is, though, Quentin, is Samson Dowd has beaten Nick Walker. Okay. And a lot of people compare you to Samson Dowd. Height wise, structure wise, I, I actually prefer your structure. I would only say that maybe the quad sweep, Samson has a little bit more of the quad sweep, and then maybe a little bit more of the thickness in the hamstring. But he doesn't have that conditioning from the back that you have. He doesn't have that conditioning that the dryness that you have overall. He doesn't have that. Yet you have the shape that Samson Dowda has. So putting your physique next to Nick Walker's knowing that Samson's beat him. And that, and that's also being less conditioned than Nick and beating him. But your you put your physique next to Nick's with the shredded glutes. I know you're going to, your glutes are already there. So they're already done. You know, four weeks of drying that, that out, you're fucking going to be peeled, peeled. So we know you would bring that from the back. Nick doesn't really even have that type of the lines, the shredded slivers in, in the glutes like like that like phil has and you have so you would you would t- take him toe to toe on those shots and you're you're going to be about 20 well not 20 pounds but he says he's gonna be 260 maybe you're going to be 270s once you cut down drop the water so you're still gonna be bigger than him you're gonna have a dominating physique over him 
I could see the reasoning. I could see the rationale to say, yeah, Quinton can take out Nick Walker because you're going to have enough muscle up there. You should with the, the, the improvements you've made, the conditioning is we know is going to be on point because it's already on point now. I don't see there's that much you need to do in my opinion. So yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a, a reasoning for why I could see you beating him. I can see you beating him in the front double bicep. I can see you beating him in the front lat side chest. That's hard to beat Nick Walker and he's super thick on the side chest. Mm -hmm. Uh, Side tricep, I think you could take him in the side tricep. Abs and thigh, definitely could take take him in the abs and thigh. Back double bicep, with the, depending on how your hamstrings, we're going to see if you've made improvements there, how they stack up to Nick's hamstrings. Uh, you can push him on that shot. And the rear lat spread, again, you can push him on that shot. But right now, I've already listed off all those other poses that you potentially beat him in. And then the most muscular, Nick usually wins the most muscular. So it'd be very close, but there's, yeah. there's the, the reasoning to, for you to beat him. So I hope you do the New Year Pro. Because yeah. if you do, you're going to have that momentum and you're going to have that opportunity to stand next to third best in the world, Nick Walker, and prove yourself and challenge yeah. yourself, right? Why not? Like it's four weeks. In a mm -hmm. sense, so I hope you do it. What What are your thoughts on that kind of assessment breakdown? It's funny you say that. That's what I think. I just wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't say. But you know, I just try and stay humble, stay quiet, and just you know, do let my work talk. But yeah, no, like Samson had those advantages, and I think it would be, you know, similar advantages, similar potentially disadvantages. Difference being, yeah, he's. Samson's bigger in like certain areas in the lower, but uh, you know, I'll bring that condition. You know, we come in peeled. And I know Nick coming in peeled. I know he's gonna be full. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like it's gonna be uh, an interesting clash of physiques. I mean, you got you know the dudes there, Antonio's, the Stu's, the Martins, like Martin. it's a lot of a lot of bad dudes, man. Yeah. So it's gonna be a real fun, it's gonna be a real fun show. Yeah, you you have Beef Stew, you have Tony O'Burton, you have Martin Fitzwater, maybe Good Vita will jump into New York, bro. So you would have a stacked top six, top five in that show. Um, and be being honest, I think you you could potentially take out Tony as well, right? Tony's got a, a great physique, top to bottom, from the back. Um, but you're just so like you're like the Raphael. You're taller than him, right? But you're gonna have way better conditioning than Raphael Brandeo had at the Arnold Brazil, which beat out Tonio. Whatever, just controversy there. Um, but so do you have a really good opportunity here to do some damage if you show up at that New York Pro? So that's why I'm really pushing for you to do that show and not get pass up on that opportunity to stand next to Nick Walker. Um, otherwise you may not get to, if you don't end up qualifying later on in the year and you got to wait till 2025 and try and do it again. So, yeah. so I, I think if you have, if you're ready, do the damn New York pro show though. I, I would, well, Matt, just, just like you, man, I think people are going to be impressed with how you line up next to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. It's you know, me. I think if I jump into that show, that's going to be the, with everybody else there, but it's not just me, obviously Nick and all those guys we both named. It'll be the biggest show of the year. Bigger than the Arnold's. Like the Arnold's, like, I mean, really, when you think about it, it was a two man show, was it not? Yeah. It was, it was, it's hotty and the Arnold Ohio was, well, and the UK was the hottie and uh, Samson, two man show. And then there was, you know, third, fourth, Don, John De La Rosa, Akeem was in there as well. So, yeah, it was a two man show. This one, this one's a little more exciting. You got a lot of really good young guys, you know, and everybody wants that shit. So it'll be good. It'll, it'll be, be good. good. So I hope, I hope you get up in there, brother, because man, you you show that physique and represent in Canada. It's not a lot of pros doing what you're doing and and coming from Canada nowadays. So that's another big deal. You represent the country when you're out there in the U.S. So that's something to hold on to man as well. and like you don't really we don't think about that sometimes like you're representing the whole, like hotties representing iran you're fucking representing canada so that means a bit that's a big deal that's true that's a good point 
Yeah, man. So I wanted to talk. I think you. I heard this in your stories about you not smoking weed anymore, or or is it what? So tell me. I wanted to do a lot about it. Bodybuilders smoke weed to help them go to sleep, and they're taking all these drugs and stuff, and they they, they struggle with that. So what's Tell us your experience with the weed situation and what's going on there. Because I heard something about that in your stories. So uh, Matt isn't a fan of weed in the sense of like using it for sleep. I don't know what he thinks of it recreationally. But uh, I even brought it up once when I was struggling with sleep. He said he doesn't recommend it. Now, in the past, like one of my preps before, I was dealing with some stuff personally. And I just didn't want to deal with that. I wanted to just focus on what I had to do. So I was smoking joints like morning, day, night before clients. I was just getting high all the time. And I felt great. It helped yeah. with my stress. Anytime I felt some sort of anxiety, I smoked a joint, I took an edible or whatever. And I it just kind of like coasted me through that experience. Now, you know, it helped me a lot. And it was great. But I just didn't like the fact that I felt like I had to depend on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, this time around, I mean, I've had my, I've had some adversity face, like heading into this conscious prep. You know, I've dealt with a lot of things, you know, and um, I just took them head on. I just dealt with everything head on. And honestly, like my mind's been more clear. My memory is better. Uh, like, I don't think that weed is bad. I don't. Oh, like, no. I will, at some point in my life, like, yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to stop forever, but <laughs> But like I love it, man. I had a good time on weed, bro. I love mm -hmm. getting having me an edible, watching something on TV, yeah. playing some PS5. You know what I'm saying? Like eating some food. Like it's it's a good time. So I'm yeah. not. I don't recommend people stop. But you know, there's studies that show that it doesn't. It, it prevents you from getting into like that deep, the deepest stage of your sleep. So mm -hmm. for me personally, trying to prioritize my recovery. That's something that I stay away from. And honestly, like I, my energy is good. My, my energy is good. My sleep's good. Everything's pretty on point this prep. Yeah. So you cut, is it completely cut out or is it just reduced? Yeah, I've cut. It's been about, I think the last time was sometime in December. Like it was funny because okay. I didn't, choose, I'm not, okay, I'm going to stop. I just got tired of it and just didn't do it. And then eventually I'm like, holy shit, I got a streak going. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so okay, that's good. That's a, a lot of bodybuilders may be like, okay, maybe I should, you know, try and cut it out during prep or whatever to get that better sleep and recovery. So that's why I wanted to, to bring that up because no one really, I don't know who else really talks about it, but it's 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 really prevalent in bodybuilding. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk about Matt Jensen. And so you've been working with him for a couple of years now. Yeah, for about I think almost like two years now. Okay. Okay. And how was your relationship with Matt? Um, I always ask everyone who is who's working with Matt, like or any other coach, are you like everything he says? You're listening to it to the word, or do you kind of listen to your body sometimes and kind of make your own decisions, or you do you just put everything in his hands? No, bro, I don't trust myself. Man. Okay. <laughs> I don't trust myself. Like if <laughs> the thing, the thing about Matt is like I, I respect his experience. I respect what he knows and what he's done and in the small instances where something was wrong and he troubleshooted it boom problem was solved so i know that sometimes like for example there's sometimes like you know there's a, a change in the diet or maybe like weeks ago he had a cardio in my head i'm like man but i was seeing progress like what yeah. but it's <laughs> you know but i just i just did it and honestly when i did it i saw even more progress so you know at the end of the day you know i put my trust in him and yeah, like I, every time I listen, I see better results. Yeah. So, awesome. It's good. good. Okay. And so obviously your goal is to qualify for the Olympia, right? Yes. And um, what, what's your, what's your take on bodybuilding and like as a, as a career, like, do you see yourself being that type of guy that wants to do, if you do become the Mr. Olympia, that you want to get like seven, eight titles, or is this something that, like how how you obviously have to be passionate about bodybuilding because you, you're doing it as a pro professionally full time. But what's your your take on it? Some guys aren't as passionate about bodybuilding and they're just kind of in it because they're good at it and they just do it. What's your kind of take on your kind of the legacy you want to kind of lead in, in bodybuilding and what you want to be known mm -hmm. for? For me, my whole thing is like leaving on your own terms, you know. Um, I met a lot of my favorite bodybuilders, a lot of the guys I look up to in the past couple of years since I've been doing this as a pro and some of them have passed away, yeah. you know, and 
listen, it, it could be for any amount of reasons, but you know, I'm pretty sure that the stuff that we do day in day out has some sort of effect on that. You know, it's funny whenever there's, it's not funny actually, but whenever there's a death in bodybuilding, you know, there's always the commenters that are like, oh, it's because of steroids, blah, blah, blah. And there's people like, you don't know that, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, guys, like what we're doing, and it's not just the drugs, but it's just the way we're pounding our bodies. Like there's going to be some sort of adverse effects. For me personally, I value my life outside of bodybuilding. Like I love bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I've been trying to get jacked since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I've always wanted big arms, a big chest. I wanted a six pack. I've always wanted to look good. I've always wanted to be jacked. And I will always be jacked. I will yeah. always live like a bodybuilder. I'm always going to be training hard. But the thing is, there is going to come a certain time where I'm not going to push my body in this way. And uh, no, I, I wouldn't, like how I'm 28 right now, mm -hmm. A couple more years, a couple more years, and then I'll go golf or some shit. Well, that's that's why I asked that because you were you're 28, which is ridiculously young in bodybuilding. Okay, so the fact that you're saying you you got, to, I think, give it some time. I think you're going to to start to do extremely well in this sport. I think you're just getting started, and I can see you doing this for five, six plus years once you get into the rhythm and you start getting winning big shows and you're on the Olympia and you're in the top five, right? I, I just really think like you're at the very beginning of your career. And as you continue to go into your mid thirties, that's when your physique is going to be at its all time best. Your year 20 is like, damn, bro. So two years, I think you got more time on it. But hey, if that's what you want to do, just compete for another two, three years and be like, that's I'm good. Yeah. Hey, more power to you. That's you. But whatever, makes that's what makes you happy. So that's why I asked that question. Because some guys are like, I'm in this for the next 15 years. I don't care. I'm going on, I'm going on <laughs> 45 or something. Right. But you're you're like, nah, I'm, I'm good for a few more years. And then I, well, I'll decide from there type of thing. Yeah. For, as, as I said, you know, I've, I've always had, you know, aspirations of having a family, being a father. Okay. So that family is like priority to me. You know, if I, if my health is like completely great, Yep. If I can, you know, do things in a way where, you know, there's minimal pressure on myself, like in terms of my, my yep. insight. Well, yeah. Like, of course, I'm, I'd love to do it. If I can find a way to like prolong my health, I would do it for a very long time, you know, but that's just a fear that I have. And it's not just a fear, but I just feel like it's somewhat realistic because when you look around and it's usually the big guys, it's the big guys that get the, the brunt of it. You know, like some of those smaller guys, they like the classic guys. I think for the most part, a lot of these guys are gonna they're gonna have long lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, like it's it's not just the drug. They could be on the same amount of drug, but it's like the amount of pressure that you're that's on your heart. Your heart. Yeah. You have twenty pounds and you're like super big and shit. So it's you know, I don't know. But that's just that's my take on it. But either way, like I love bodybuilding. I want to be jacked forever. Awesome. Awesome. Good to hear. And yeah, you, you're talking about you meeting some bodybuilders over the last few years now that you've been competing as a pro. So who is your all-time favorite bodybuilder out there right now? Or past, present, whatever. I'll, I'll name a few. Uh, I love Ronnie Coleman. Huge Ronnie Coleman fan. Um, Jake Cutler. Uh, Dexter Jackson. So those guys are some of my favorites. Uh, Sean Rodin. Definitely. Yeah. Favorites and uh, Cedric McMillan also uh, in more recent years. Like for me, I usually go towards guys that I have similarities with, you know, because I can see myself in them. I was able to see myself in some of those guys, even like Flex Wheeler, Chris Cormier. But um, yeah, for those two, like Cedric and Flex Citron, man, like those ones hurt. Yeah, man. It's crazy that Cedric's gone, Roden's gone, just these so young too, like. So I see why you have that impression where it's like, man, I got to watch, which is good. I'm glad like you're, you're conscious of taking care of your health. You see that there is a risk factor doing what you do. And you're probably, I'm sure you're getting your blood work done and, and going to see your doctor and all that and getting that shit checked out. You're not just one of those guys. Cause a lot of them didn't do that. They didn't check their, get their blood work down. So what's your process? Are you getting that stuff done? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they do like, uh, usually at the end of cycles, and then I'll do it sometimes a couple times during that period when I'm off the cycle. 
before I get back on just to make sure if there's any markers that are like elevated that I'm able to bring them down or able to get a hold of them or able to at least have in mind that there's something that, you know, isn't up to standard. Cool. Okay. And do you, when you're finished to prep or finish your, your, a show and you're done for the season, do you come completely off or do you just cruise TRT style or like what's your kind of protocol when you're between? I've shows? always cruised, but yeah. this, this year, after this year, I'm going to come off completely for a couple months okay. to give my body a complete break. And, uh, you know, I was, I was always motivated by Kevin Lavroni. you know, the, I think he injured his pack one year. So yeah. he had to stop. And he's like, you know what? Let me try. Let me like get ready for a show. And he he did it, and he looked incredible. He looked like nothing changed. So yeah, yeah I feel like there's you. There could definitely be a benefit to that when you give your body that much of a break. Like your receptors are totally fresh, you know, and you're just you probably can last a bit longer because you're yeah. not constantly moving on the joints, you're not constantly walking on with like 330 pounds. So yeah, I'm definitely eager to try that at some point. I think it was a good idea to do. I know Ronnie and them did that too. They took two, three months off sometimes. Um, nowadays, it seems like guys don't want to do that. They think, well, if I do that, I'm just going to get small. And they get the self-conscious. A lot of bodybuilders are self-conscious. They, they, they have to be big. They have to be big all the time. And um, so the fact that you're like, yeah, you know, yeah, I'll take some time off. Sure, I'm going to lose some some tissue, but that that's going to maybe rebound tenfold. I'll maybe get a tenfold return on that because of the recovery time I'm going to have and the extra growth I might get and longevity I might get out of my career by doing it. So definitely on the right path and, and making the right moves. And man, I'm excited to see you. Whatever show you do this year, we're rooting for you. Canada is rooting for you. And um, before I let you go, I want to give, let you give a shout out to your sponsors because I know you got a ton of sponsors. So I'll let you list them off for us. Okay. Shout out to HC Muscle. Shout out to Iron Bull. Shout out to Biolabs. Uh, shout out to Prep Shop. <laughs> shout out to Gas from Better Bodies. And uh, I believe that is all. Okay. Another question came to my head. If you get invited to the 2025 Arnold, Ohio, with a half a million first prize, are you doing the show? No, I'm not. No. Because... I'm going to be competing at the Olympia this year. And yes. That's and then with taking that time off, this December, January, sure. I wouldn't have time to get Four, to five months. Because yeah. what if you have guys like Derek jumping in? I can't see why Derek wouldn't do it. I can't see why Hottie wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. If those guys are doing it, are you at the standpoint in the mindset, well, they're already – at their well, no, I won't say Derek is at his is is its potential, but like Hottie's at his peak. Hottie, yeah. you know, he can, can do multiple shows and be fine and keep that shape. Is it, so? What's the reason you just don't think you have enough time to? Well, well, with coming off completely after the Olympia, okay. I don't think I'll have enough time to bounce back for a show that early. Okay, so you just say taking your health into consideration there. You know, like you you need that recovery. You need to go off right, and you just don't have enough time. Okay, so. Okay, I just want to put that out there because that's a that's a big deal if they invite you to that show. Um, but you're like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna pass on it and uh, you know focus on going back to the Olympia. Yeah, 2026 again. will be the year. 2026. Okay, okay, let's do it. Do it. All right, man. No, I appreciate you coming on, taking the time. I know this is your off day. This is your low carb day, so you're getting through it's it, man. All, it's all good. It's all good, man. I've been really quiet for a long time, so it's nice to you know start talking bodybuilding again. So yeah, I appreciate. Man. Me on. Awesome. No, appreciate it. And we'll have to have you on again after you do some shows. And man, I'm excited for you. And again, fellow Canadian bodybuilder, I'm rooting for you. Okay. Appreciate you, man. We'll definitely keep in touch. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll All catch right. you guys on the next one. Okay. Peace.